what shall we publish? And I had already become a fan of Fidelma and thought, well, we can contact Peter Tremaine and see if he's interested in having his books published in Argentina. And he very kindly said he would be delighted. Of course, I forewarned him that he wouldn't get much money out of it <laughs> because he didn't know anything about publishing at that stage. Uh, but he was interested anyway. My Fidelma in my artwork is my own sister. She's my model. Oh, wow. <laughs> She's my model, so I prepared her the costume and we had a photo session and then I used those pictures to do the artwork. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's been an, an adventure. And as regards the problems in translation, uh, Anna was talking about <coughs> how do we go about it? You can either translate word by word with a very poor result mm -hmm. because each language uh, has its own way of expressing ideas and things and sometimes the literal translation of a word won't convey the same feeling mm -hmm. or atmosphere mm -hmm. as the original one. So it's not just a matter of grabbing a dictionary and finding the translation for the word, but reading the whole sentence or the whole paragraph, getting the feeling of the paragraph, and then thinking, how would I say this in Spanish, <laughs> that the, the audience would get this same feeling, even if the words are not the same. Mm -hmm. But you have to try and look for the atmosphere. And that is much more challenging than just translating words. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, must, it's what makes it interesting, I believe. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and of course, this results in translation being a very subjective mm -hmm. uh, job, something very personal. And in a series, uh, a long series as Fidelmas, I think it, it should be uh, very, very important to keep the same translators for as long as you can. <coughs> As translation is such a personal job, you get a style mm -hmm. when you translate. And if you have part of the series done by one translator, and then the rest of the series done by another one, and one works in this manner of trying to get the atmosphere, and the other one just translates words, the result will be absolutely different mm -hmm. around the Abbey. Mm -hmm. And they sit for a little while, and it's the first time they speak of something a little bit more personal. He, he tells her about his previous life and, and his family and his origin, and she tells her a little bit of hers. And I thought, well, it's now or never. <laughs> Once they were having this intimate moment, I thought, well, now it's the time. So very smoothly, I changed uh, the way in which they were addressing each other. But those are the little difficulties that when you you can find it when you're using a language that doesn't work in the same way. That mm -hmm. happened in Argentina. Not many people know much about mm -hmm. the Celtic world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They know a lot about music, <laughs> mm -hmm. Celtic music, because it's fashionable nowadays. Mm -hmm. But apart from music, no idea whatsoever uh, of anything else Celtic. So. It was a, a problem, and I told uh, Peter how he felt about including at the back of our books uh, a glossary. Mm -hmm. Because really, there, were, there are so many terms that our public wouldn't know about. Mm -hmm. uh, not only the words are foreign, but the, the concepts mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. unknown. Yeah. So there was so, so much to explain. In fact, when I started reading the Fidelma books, I was so fascinated that I kept going to the internet to find out <laughs> yes, more. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, the hiking, hacking, is, was there a low king? <laughs> <laughs> so I just had, and I felt so curious, so I kept going to the internet to find more information, and I, I ended up uh, buying academic Irish books and <laughs> Irish history yeah. just to know. And I thought our readers will probably not be as curious as I am, so let's give them everything on a plate and include a glossary at the back. So 
Actually, the Fidel one made of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not not among the other characters, you have the except name. for, for example, Fidelmo's cousin. Okay. Uh, with him, as they are related, or with his brother, of course, they are mm -hmm. talking to each other in a very informal manner. Mm -hmm. But <coughs> among the other characters, I keep it formal. Yeah. yeah. And our translation is in between. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. It is funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Like the, uh, the thing about the centipede. You know, when the centipede is asked, you know, gosh, you've got all these legs, how do they work? <laughs> yes. The centipede falls over backwards because he can't think how they work. <laughs> yeah. No, but just on the way, Hans, because of, let's say, the translators, then, that they are looking for the clues, but we wouldn't necessarily be thinking of them as clues as such. It's right. just how you might be feeling at a, at a particular time. That's right. It, yeah. it's, uh, it's purely subconscious. I'm, I'm glad they're there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for you, because yeah, yeah, yeah. from what you're saying, oh gosh, I, mean, I would <laughs> like to be a translator. Yeah, it's <laughs> not hard work, but it's very interesting and mm. funny and, and rewarding. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When sometimes you, you start, I don't know if that happens to you, but sometimes I'm and I have the book there, and I'm typing, and oh, okay, and it just flows. And all of a sudden, you get to a paragraph, and you say, oh my god. And then you all get stuck. Mm -hmm. I know why, because it's not the difficulty of the words, mm -hmm. but maybe it is of getting the atmosphere. And sometimes you get stuck, and you, and you write, no, and you go back, <laughs> and you write again, no, and you go back. And sometimes you, you you stop for a long time in, in, in a spot until you find a way around it. And then you just, it flows again. Um, I don't know if that happens yeah, to you. Yeah. One thing that really interests me, uh, do you read the European Spanish uh, translations? Mm. The, the Spanish? Spanish? Yeah. 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 I just read, uh, mm. I read, you sent me two copies of Spanish editions, mm -hmm. and uh, I read only those, but I don't buy them. Um, just you sent them, and just yeah. out of curiosity, I, I read them. And I'm just wondering the, the, the differences between Argentinian. They're and very Spanish. different oh, exactly. because um, we wouldn't f feel comfortable mm -hmm. because it's not the Spanish we speak. Mm -hmm. it, it, it sounds like old. It sounds for 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 Latin American Spanish speakers. The Spanish from Spain, it has an ancient feeling, like mm -hmm. if you were reading Cervantes, oh, it, no. it, it feels old <laughs> to us. Um, so so we can read and we can understand it, but you wouldn't be comfortable. Mm -hmm. I notice even the title of sister is different. Yeah, sort for, our, for us it's sister is hermana, mm -hmm. and for the Spanish it's sor. Really? And sor, mm -hmm. sor it's... You wouldn't find in Latin America anybody calling a sister Sor, wow. Sor Fidelma. It, it's very old. It's from the times of the colony. Mm -hmm. oh. So we use sister, which is literally a man. Mana, yeah. Right. It's a, the, the, the there's a, a, yeah. 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 There's yeah. a similar yeah. thing in our south to the glaciers in Patagonia. And most of the tourists down there are foreign. And we were on this uh, excursion, this trip on a ship going through the lake to see the glaciers. And uh, the guy on the, on the this ship started giving directions to, to all these foreign people. And all of a sudden she says, please, with, with a terrible accent, I'm speaking very clearly. And she said, please, we ask parents to keep children on ice. <laughs>
eyes, uh, keep them in sight, it was eyes. But the funny thing was, was that we were surrounded by these glaciers. <laughs> all the tourists were just looking at the glaciers. <laughs> <laughs> She, uh, as I don't know to mention this, she completely modernized the whole book. Yeah. It was it was all in rubbish language. And she wrote it in modern English, and of course marriage guidance, you know, the matchmaking became the marriage guidance. There was lots of other things. But she gave completely up and just wanted to chuck it straight out the window. And she had understood the period it was written in. She'd understood nothing that you have to understand in another language. So she it, there's, there's so much to translate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and and by, by the time I started translating the books, um, mm -hmm. fortunately, I already was a fan of Fidelma. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had read yeah. everything that up to that date existed yeah. uh, of the Fidelma series. So I loved the character, I loved the series, I knew what it was about. So when I started translating it, uh, it, was, it wasn't I just said, let's see, what's this about? Okay. No, I already had feelings for the character and, and, and the series, so that was one